body. I, I can find anything that wouldn't be degraded by your natural enzymes or whatever. I mean, especially something through which small devices like the thermistors would actually work. And then there was things like calibrating the damn things and stepping down the voltage so that it didn't actually shock me when I put it in my hand, and all kinds of things. At this point, it was a transdermal thing, and I would like to say to all of you, if you're considering anything, got any projects, please put them completely under the skin. Don't think of having things hanging out because it goes so wrong so fast. It's, it's just, it's bad. It's, it's stinky and nasty and bad. <laughs> Lessons learned. Just because it's waterproof, don't mean it's bioproof. Uh, trust me on this one. <laughs> Just because you can leave it in the bath for three days doesn't mean it's fine inside your hand. You have to test things, or let me test them. Transdermal implants, bad idea. Nasty, stinky sepsis, bad. <laughs> it's almost impossible to keep them clean. Also, I learned a lot about basic electronics from this that you guys probably already knew. By the time I gave up on this stupid project, the sense came back, and now it's gone again. <laughs> Go figure. Some experiments, you don't learn anything. Go on. Ah, these guys, I actually can show you how to do these guys. They're, basically, they're not my invention. I don't want anyone thinking that I invented these things because Steve Hayworth did in Arizona, and he wants 50 euros per implant and 150 to put them inside you, which is why I'm here, because I want to tell you how to do it for free. <laughs> so that, that's, that's the raw cost. That's the cost of getting the implants imported. They're very expensive. But... If you want something professional and go and get some, well, I guess you could do, you could go and get a new sense, whole six of them for like, all of your savings. <laughs> do, do consider Steve Hayworth as an, as an alternative. Uh, I had some too, I think, fitted professionally, and then I decided that these cost too much money. Basically, they act as a sensory extension, like I was telling you before. They're tiny magnets. They, when they come into contact with an electromagnetic field, they resonate and generate electricity of their own, which obviously, because they're in your fingertips, sets off nerves. So when you come into contact with any kind of device field, any, any power lines in the walls, things on a socket, CD-ROMs, hard drives, anything like that, then it gets it off. It's just a little, it's a sensory extension, a cute little one. Not particularly useful, so please don't go thinking this will make you into Cyberman or something, because it's, it's just for kicks, really. It's just an extra layer of data on top of the data you already get. But they're easy to make, and you can do it yourself. First thing I had to do was figure out how to get these things inside me by yourself, which is actually quite hard. Uh, you can't have piercers do it in most places anymore. In Amsterdam and Norway, this is still legal. So if you want to go do it professionally, do it there. But you can't do it in France. You can't do it. You can do it sort of in Germany, but you have to be in a piercer studio. Lots and lots of problems with doing this at any kind of professional level. So I figured it was much better to do by myself. So I sat down in my kitchen with a vegetable peeler. I shit you not. And I decided to put things in my hands. <laughs> the first time I ever sat down, it went horribly, horribly wrong. Uh, the whole thing went septic, and I put myself in the hospital for two weeks. And it was not very pretty, so lesson learned, sterilize everything. <laughs> sterilize everything with vodka if you have to, but make sure you get everything. Uh, there was the two, two or three attempts so far have been successful. I still need one more to go, and it's... It's really not a difficult procedure. I'll be telling you pretty much precisely how to do it later on. But as I said, that horrible failure was pretty goddamn horrible, and I learned a lot from there. Uh, mostly just simple stuff like get surgery over with as quickly as possible because you're not very coherent during it, and where to find simple trick how to find veins in your hands, just shine a torch through them so that you don't hit an artery and bleed out and have to get taken to hospital because it's bad. <laughs> Uh, various things, uh, delicate components, uh, the number of times that I've snicked things coated in silicon and then had them rust inside. If anything's snicked at all, like if you've chipped it or dropped it on the floor or whatever, don't use it because they do rust so badly, even if you can't see the cut yourself. Uh, things like spotters, you always need a spotter with you, always, because you will pass out, even if you think you're hardcore and you need to use proper tools. Don't use a scalpel for anything in your fingertips. It's too painful, and you won't be able to do it. Use a big-ass 5 millimeter needle instead. I hope you like needles. <laughs> Successfully installed implants, they, they just function like any other sense you've got. They're just there in the background. They're not intrusive. It's just they, they set off when something's there. They don't when it's not. Depending on how strong the field is, uh, there's an there's an MRI lab in my university that I can feel from about two meters away. Most devices you can feel by about mm, this far. 
really strong one than you this far. But it's just, it's like an interesting local range sense. So what precisely they sense, I don't know. It's some kind of EM field. It comes off devices, it comes off power lines. I don't know exactly what it is. One of you probably will, because I'm not very bright. Ask me later. <laughs> like I said, that's my half-baked theory about magnetic resonance, is that you come into contact with fields, the magnets resonate and generate electricity. I don't know if that's right. It's probably not. Max Planck would probably choke me for saying that. But it doesn't matter to the function device. They work no matter how well you know them. They work if you don't know they're there. It could be tested via double blind, hasn't been tested yet, would accept any testing. Question lots of people ask me, is this actually worth it? The sense is rudimentary, it is short range, it's very, very crude. Uh, if Curiosity is not your thing, please don't go doing this to yourself because it's not for lots of people. Most transhumanist dreams are all about immortality and eternal youth and wanting to become Superman and wanting to walk up walls like Spider-Man and shit and it's just not gonna happen. This is very crude, very hacky transhumanism. It's, it's not, if you want eternal life, you need to go bother somebody else. <laughs> Second part of working with these things was that the components themselves, as I've said, are actually very expensive. They're coated in medical grade silicon, they're made of rare earth magnets, they're, uh, they're coated in gold as well, they're, they're not cheap to get. I managed to spend all of my grant on one set of them. The official ones, that's the ones that are made out of that shit, you can only get from Hayworth or from his suppliers, so two places. Uh, they're, they're, they're like unobtainium, they're pretty much impossible to get hold of. So the import rules are weird on them and you'll get taxed like 20% of the value and it's just not worth trying to get these things to a country where you, they're not made. But the component is just very, very simple. It's just neodymium, which you can buy en masse, non-coated. The problem is the coating of gold and silicon. That's so, somebody showed me, if you Google neodymium magnet disks, you can get four or five industrial suppliers. You can buy a bag of these things for the price of Hayworth's one. So, all you have to do is basically mimic what these guys are. I mean, they're, they're a little tiny two millimeter wide, one millimeter deep neodymium disc, coated in gold leaf, not necessary, coated in medical silicon. So the final's about four millimeters by two millimeters. And they're, like I said, they're very easy to, to obtain when coated, but they're toxic. They're really, really, really toxic. Don't put them in your fingers raw. Uh, they, they need coating because they'll poison the crap out of you. So when it, what I was working on is find a way to coat them and a material that will coat them properly that you could get without using an injection mold that you can get that you guys could, well, take out of a packet in your kitchen and use. Uh, finally, I found one, which is somebody else showed it to me online. It's called Sugru. It, if you Google this, you can buy it in little packets. It's really strange. It's like a moldable silicon rubber, a bit like Play-Doh that hardens into silicon. So if you buy this stuff, obviously, really easily, you can just coat stuff up. You can coat whatever the hell you like. I mean, I've tested nodes of it on neodymium. I've tested loads of it just plain in the body. I've got lumps of it in there that have been there for six or seven months. It's completely non-toxic. It doesn't do balls all. And if you can't get hold of Sugru, you can also use hot glue from a glue gun because it's the same thing. <laughs> uh, lots of things inside me are coated in hot glue gun glue because it's just, it seems to be sort of a perfect bioproofer. A super glue, bad idea. I've tried this before and I almost lost a fingertip. Don't do it. You think it's the same thing, but it's not. <laughs> you can, basically, you can order the discs and some Sugru online, get some needles and some sterilization gear and a friend to help you out. You can do the whole thing for maybe 20, maybe 40 quid. That's six implants and a lot of pain at once. But if you did it all at once, it would be very, very cost effective. And like I said, it costs about 100 quid. <laughs> what? <laughs> you, could maybe, you could maybe get one for a hundred quid in a piercer studio and then you'd have to find a piercer to get it because they don't do it in England anymore. There's one guy in Germany here in Mannheim that does it, but that's about it. So like I said, if anyone wants complete instructions for this, I can give it to you. I'm just not sure whether I'm allowed to give it to you here, so uh, email me. <laughs> it's a, you probably get the procedure from just what I've said. Nodes everywhere. Anyone could do this. Absolutely anyone could make up a whole batch of these things and give them to everyone, except I think that's illegal, so don't. <laughs> you could, you, please don't put them in anyone else, because a friend of mine got into real trouble for that. You can put them in yourself, you can be your own guinea pig, but I think having other people as guinea pigs makes you kind of a mad scientist, so don't. <laughs> just, just check your local laws first. <laughs> And so this one was pretty much one of my most successful experiments. It's the only one I've finished. 
Uh, you learn how to, I learned how to do the entire procedure so I can give step-by-steps to anyone who wants it. I know how to manufacture the implants on an actual budget rather than a ridiculous gold leaf budget. I know everything about aftercare. These things are pretty much a success. I just wish people would sort of like them. Uh, the, the only thing is that they feel kind of nasty for about two weeks before you put them in. I mean, after you put them in. So uh, do expect some grossness because it's really nasty. Uh, like I said, just email me if you guys actually want step by steps. You might not need them. Next thing I was working on is, well, the Sensebridge Hackerspace, there are a couple of colleagues of mine. They have a North Pore, which is a haptic compass I talked about earlier. It's just a, it's attached to a PCB. PCB senses compass direction via a little compass module. It's attached to some electro, um, I mean some motors, and whichever, you wear it on an anklet around your ankle, and whichever motor is facing north, buzzes north. Very interesting concept, but I don't like wearable stuff, I like subdermal stuff, so I decided to make a proper subdermal version. I bought a North Pole and started trying to figure out how you would make this thing subdermal. It's basically, they call, I don't know whether the word haptic is still appropriate, but it is a constant compass. This thing, if you wear it normally, it's a constant sense of which way is north, and if you implanted it, it would be a proper sense of which way is north. It turned out to be a hell of a lot more complex than I've already, than I actually imagined. I figured you could just take a north pole and cut it up and put it in, and that's not how it works at all. Uh, for a start, everything's too big. For another thing, you can't actually use motors. Well, there's no point using motors inside the skin because uh, that's silly. You could just use electrodes. Okay, so this is just the North Pole itself. Sensebridge built a custom PCB that runs it, but the whole thing just takes data in from the compass module, powers it via a battery pack, uses a ring of servos, and it's all held in place with this fabric anklet. You get it in a kit, you build it yourself, it's pretty cool. Uh, it's well tested, so the actual principle works quite well. Quinn Norton's got one, it's been in H Plus magazine, it's been out for about two years, it's very well known. Uh, Southpaw, which is what mine will be called because I'm left handed, is the same thing. It's just different hardware. So the principle's not new. I mean, uh, this haptic sensor has been around for a really long time. Uh, existing North Pole, you can't just chuck it in. Uh, there's batteries that it runs on, which is a bad idea. You can't put those inside you. It needs bioproofing. Everything's way too big. Like I said, motors are kind of stupid because it's just using a middleman. You really need electrodes under the skin. Uh, it doesn't adapt to change of axis. So if you put your like that, it won't tell you which one's north anymore. It'll still be pointing north as if you were walking directly. That needs fixing, but not a problem because we have a different microprocessor. And it only has eight directions, which is kind of crap. So me and some people set out to fix this, really, and make it not only better, but more of a more implanted device. It is just for fun. It's not finished yet. Uh, like I said, my controller uses a much smaller microcontroller rather than a custom PCB, because I ain't smart enough for that. So it uses a little tiny, uh, I think it's about two millimeters by three millimeters, it's a little mi MSP microcontroller. Philips compass chip is a little bit bigger. I'm still trying to find a miniature version of that, but at a pinch, the normal one could fit too. It uses an inductive receiver coil. Uh, the transmitter coil is external to it, so you can charge it overnight while it's still inside you. Lithium cells, this is, I didn't work out the coil by myself. Somebody else helped me. I don't know if they're even here or not, but so that, that wasn't me. I'm not smart enough for that shit. Output is 16 euro electrodes on your lower left leg. Could be on your right leg as well, but it's better to put it on the hand that, or leg that you write with, just because you're more used to things coming in from there. Uh, mine's on the left leg. Like I said, could be anywhere you want. It's just better on the leg because that tends to be more of a stable axis. And my immediate concerns are more like getting components <laughs> rather than figuring out blueprints because I, I know what I'm going to do. I just don't quite have the money to do it yet. So if anyone wants to, you know, catch up and do this instead of me, go ahead. <laughs> Piecing together electronics I've been doing, I've been figuring out how to not shock myself with it, figuring out how to work the power transfer, all kinds of things. Figuring out how to keep coils stable inside your body is quite difficult also. Well, it turns out all you have to do is make more stable cuts, but there you go. Our future plans, well, they're not really future, more like immediate future, but I need to get a physical prototype working before anything else. I mean, uh, the, the programming side of it's really not going to be hard. All it has to do is take in data and put in output correspondingly. But it needs testing larger objects and Suguru. I've tested a lot of large things, but never all together. So I don't know how a lot of, well, lots of implants in one area is actually going to go together. This is all very experimental. <laughs> uh, I need more people to join in also, because I'm quite bored of this just being me. So, uh, if anyone wants to join in. <laughs> 
Also, I need to learn a lot more about electronics because all the stuff I know involves a PCB, and that's really not 